Hello again. Um, so we're asked to talk about the difference between the, uh, the configuration menu in the Mega 65 that works a bit like a BIOS on a PC and the integrated freezer because both of them can do a number of the same kind of things. If we have a look uh, here on the bench, we've got two Mega 65 side by side. So on this one, I'll hold down the two shift keys at the same time and tap the reset button. And this gets us into the utility menu. So if we wanted to reformat the SD card, uh, we could hop in there and have a look. Uh, but instead we want number one, configure Mega 65. And so now we get this nice menu and we can choose a bunch of different things. So we have here on uh, input devices, we should have automatic emulation of the 1351 uh, Commodore 64 mouse. It's a bit hard to find. Uh, using an Amiga mouse, which are, are much easier to find. So there's a, a few convenient things like that. Uh, then on the chipset, uh, you can choose whether you want the old or the new revision of the DMA chip from the Commodore 65. And perhaps of more interest, we can choose whether the uh, internal disk drive, uh, as it's used, either gets disk images from the SD card or uses the real internal floppy drive. And if we are using SD card, we can choose what the name of the disk is that is mounted automatically on boot. And so this really is the, is the key here, is that this menu is providing the settings that will happen when the machine boots up. And so again, we can move across and we have video. Uh, so we can choose whether we want PAL or NTSC, 50 or 60 hertz, depending on what your monitor is uh, doing and what you want to, uh, uh, to work with. We can also choose, do we want stereo or mono output? So whether we mix the two sits together for both channels whether we want to have inverted channels, and there's a couple of different options for the way that the, uh, the digital audio is output uh, as well. And we can set our MAC address. Uh, and then if we did make some change, we can hit F7, um, and we can say we want to save uh, as defaults, or it might be you want to try some of those settings out now uh, for the rest of the boot and see if, uh, you know, if they're suitable. Or you might want to say, oh, I don't know, I want to abandon all of that. Um, and this option, I think we actually need to remove it, that it actually doesn't do anything anymore, where you could say, oh, I'll, I'll try it now. So if you change the video mode, for example, it would apply uh, immediately. So a lot of these things are all, you know, they're works in progress, uh, and some of the overlaps and things might uh, change over time. But it gives you a little bit of an idea of what that can do. In, in contrast, so on this one, we'll press the restore key for about a second, and this brings up the integrated freeze menu. Uh, and so here we have some of the same things, so we can change the video mode when we resume. And there are some things here that you can't do there. Uh, so we can toggle whether the a cartridge is currently enabled or not. So you can tell the machine to ignore uh, the cartridge control lines so that uh, you can do other things even though you have a cartridge left in. Uh, you can swap joysticks port one and two without actually having to pull the joysticks out, which is quite nice. We can change the CPU frequency. We've got the, uh, the nice different uh, displays there around the um, uh, uh, the thumb sh thumbnail, and the thumbnail is generated in hardware, so we can see there that's actually what was on the screen before. And if I hop back out for a minute, and if we poke 53281, comma, we'll make it purple. If we hop back in, it's now purple. So it's actually being generated in real time in hardware, so this makes it much easier to find if you have saved games and things in the free slots. And so you can use the cursor keys to navigate through the list of free slots. So we've got here uh, something that we've frozen earlier, so let's try and resume that. So we can just say F3 to load from the slot. And we've got the sound turned off at the moment, so we only have the picture. Uh, but you get the idea, so we can you know, really easily swap uh, what we're doing. I don't know whether we have anything else in different free slots or not, but we can have, but by default, you end up with a lot of free slots and you've got a decent size SD card. So you don't even have to muck about with, uh, with loading disk images once you've got programs set up and running. Uh, you can really pull them in uh, really nice and easily, and we'll add a search facility and things over time with, uh, with this. And of course, you can choose F7 to save what we're currently running into a different slot. Uh, so let's save in there and we'll speed this up a little bit, because uh, it takes a few seconds at the moment to, uh, to save into a fresh slot. Uh, and there it is there now. So we now have that, so where we, what we're currently running is always in slot zero, uh, and where we had loaded it from was slot one, so it's still in there, we have another copy of it there, and now we've just saved it in slot 2045. So we actually have three copies at the moment, one of them transient, and we can choose whichever one we want to, uh, uh, to reload. And we can see the ball position uh, is varied between uh, a couple of them. So yeah, we can do a bunch of things. And also, there's a, a memory monitor uh, built into the, um, uh, the freeze menu so you can inspect and this is inspecting the frozen memory 
So you can modify the frozen memory if you wanted to. So if we have a look at, we'll use the full 28-bit addresses of the Mega 65. So let's set the border color to one. And have I done that right? This is also a work in progress. Uh, 3020, make it two in fact. might actually be showing the uh, the two digit numbers wrong, we'll find out, because uh, we can then exit back out. We can also go in, hit A, and go into the audio mixer. So at the moment, it's currently set up for mono, because we've got the left and right headphone jack channels uh, with the same audio levels for digital left, digital right, and then SID left and SID right, and the master volume is currently set on full. Uh, we can just use the function keys to, uh, uh, to change those. Run stop will get us out of there. And yeah, we can just go back and uh, resume what we're doing if we want to. So the freeze menu is really about what you're doing now and being able to save programs so that you can come back to them in a really convenient way when you want to. So as soon as the machine started up, if we uh, reset the machine again now and have a look, so we're back to there. We don't even have to wait for it to finish getting there. We can just choose a slot that we want, load it up, and you know, in about in under a second, uh, you can be running whatever program that you've previously had running on the Mega 65. You really want to make it really comfortable, convenient, uh, and enjoyable uh, to use this machine to play. So on the, uh, the portable one, when I'm using that around the place, I've got a bunch of games already saved into slots on that. And so I can go, oh, okay, I'm on the plane or the train. Uh, I'll play Gyrus now or Crackout or whatever I would like to do. Uh, and it's all uh, just really nice and easy to, uh, to use. So, yeah, that's the configuration menu and the freeze uh, menu for the time being, and you know, they'll all evolve as we continue to work on the machines, uh, but it's already uh, moving forward really nicely, we think. So, thank you very much.